Hey guys, it's Tim, and this is HN Annotated. In Infinity War, while everything eventually came together in the end, throughout most of the film, it's really four separate stories that branch off from the opening scene of the movie. After the attack on the Asgard ship by Thanos and the Black Order, three of our stories start. First, we have Hulk being sent to Earth and warning Doctor Strange of Thanos coming to Earth, which itself branches into two stories, Bruce Banner reconnecting with Steve Rogers, which leads into the Battle of Wakanda, and Doctor Strange, Iron Man, and Spider-Man going up into space after being attacked by the Black Order. The second path that branched off from the opening scene, though, was Thanos' own story of collecting the remaining Infinity Stones, which intersects with those other two paths at varying points. Finally, the third path, and fourth overall, is Thor's story where he's found by the Guardians of the Galaxy, most of whom end up being a part of Thanos' and Iron Man stories later on. With the first three stories I mentioned, those story threads tended to weave together throughout the course of the narrative, but Thor's story remained pretty separate for most of it until the very end where he shows up at Stormbreaker to fight Thanos. This is mostly because Thor's path runs opposite of Thanos's, as both are going on their own hero's journey, which ends up with the two confronting each other in Wakanda. Thor's call to action was the death of half of his people, while Thanos's was the apparent death of all of his people and his planet. However, Thor's classic hero journey path was an intentional misdirect so that the audience would be caught off guard by the ending, as co-director Joe Russo explained in an email interview with Cinema Blend. Thor really goes on a kind of classic hero's journey. He wanted to create the feeling in the film that Thor was actually going to save the day. So him going to get the weapon that could kill Thanos was a critical part of the story, and we had to give a lot of screen time and a lot of strong dramatic interest, because we really wanted people to be invested in that, so that they would be coming to the climax with that feeling. We know that Thor's journey eventually led him, Rocket, and Groot to the place where Mjolnir was originally forged in an attempt to forge a new weapon to kill Thanos. Here they meet up with Peter Dinklage's E-Tree and restart the Star Forge in order to create Stormbreaker. From there, he returns to Earth, and it all ends with Thanos' snap. However, this wasn't always going to be the path that Thor took in the film. Again, Joe Russo gave some details on another route they thought of taking. We explored a lot of different ideas of where Thor could go to get that weapon. We even had versions of the story at one time where he was going to visit a sort of ghost of his dead grandfather, which was one version we were playing with that we didn't end up using. I am happy with where we settled. So while Thor was always going to end up with Stormbreaker, it seems that in one iteration of the story, he was going to get it from Vor somehow. Joe Russo didn't specify how he would meet his grandfather, though one possible option would be that Thor would travel to Valhalla, the realm of the honored dead. We had already seen Vor, played by Tony Curran, in the opening theme of Thor the Dark World, so he'd already been established in the MCU at this point. Honestly, this may have ended up working better in the grand scheme of things. One thing I found weird from the get-go in Thor's story was that he was already positive immediately after being found by the Guardians that the dwarves could just whip up a weapon strong enough to take down Thanos once he got to them. Okay, how did he know that? And if he knew this the whole time, why did he never go to get it during his quest between Age of Ultron and where he met up with him in Ragnarok? His plan was at the very least to stop the Infinity Stones from coming together, so it never occurred to him to have a stronger weapon in case that came close to happening? Like it is right now? It just raises a lot of questions when he just asserts that this is true, and then they get there and Ichi confirms that it is. It's hard to even claim that Thor's in denial after an encounter with Thanos, because he doesn't even seem that surprised when it ends up being right. So it comes across like he did in fact know for sure that there was a stronger weapon he could get this whole time. With him meeting with Bor, not only do you have the built-in connection with the Infinity Stones, since Bor was the one who took it from the Dark Elves in the first place and had it hidden away, but Thor speaking with spirits of his ancestors had already been established too. In Ragnarok, when he's losing to the Hulk on Sakaar, and especially when he's losing to Hela on Asgard, Odin's spirit contacts him and in both cases allows him to channel his lightning through his own body. In the latter case, he even has a conversation with Odin. Plus, it would establish spirits more strongly in the MCU as a concept, which could tie into the Soul Stone and how it's used in Avengers 4. The main downside to this is twofold, though. 
If he meets with Thor in Valhalla, it could run the risk of bogging down the narrative of Thor's story, since it would mean he would likely have to confront all the people who died on his watch at the start of the film. Granted, this isn't a bad idea in and of itself, it just would have started feeling like a different movie had they gone that route. On the other hand, if Thor contacts Bor in a similar way to how he spoke with Odin in Ragnarok, just contacting him in his head, instead of it feeling like Odin trying to drive Thor forward when he's down. Because both Bor and his connection to Thor aren't well established, it could come across like Thor's just pulling the solution out of his ass and rob the storyline of its intended purpose. Overall though, what we got, though raising some question, works fine for what it needed to do for the movie. But it's interesting to speculate how things could have been had they gone the Bor route. But what do you guys think? Do you like what we ended up getting? Or do you think that they should have gone the Bor route? Well as always, let us know your thoughts down in the comments, and until next time, this has been Tim for HN Annotated.